So you're downstairs on your lunch break, you're eating some chips or whatever, and overhead you hear code blue, code blue, room 402, code blue, room 402. What you do then is you wrap up your chips, you toss them to the side, and then you start running towards that room because, you know, code blue generally means that it's an emergency and that the patient is dying. So when is the code blue called in a hospital? So code blue is generally called whenever a patient looks like they're going to die, looks like their heart rate is going to stop, or their heart has stopped, or their breathing has stopped, they're just in some kind of failure, either heart-wise heart or respiratory-wise. The patient does not look good, and you need an emergency there <laughs> ASAP. So who responds to a code blue? So generally, it's the charge nurse that's on that floor, um, it'll be the nursing supervisor, it'll be a lot of nurses already on that floor, it'll be some of the CNAs that are on that floor to help do compressions, it'll be respiratory therapists, it'll be an anesthesia, and you'll have doctors come as well. So it'll either be like uh, the hospitalist or nocturnalist, or sometimes even critical care comes to the code blue, because most times the person will get intubated and then get shipped to the ICU if they get ROSC back, which is basically meaning that the patient got their heart rate back, their blood is flowing again, everything is fine and dandy for the moment, but we want to get them to the ICU so we can give them some more serious drugs that's going to help keep that patient alive. Anyway, going back to you just throwing your chips to the side, you run to the code blue, and what do you do? So you're the respiratory therapist, you kind of sneak your way in there, get back behind the patient, you want to start bagging the patient or breathing for the patient. So. Um, Here's a small clip just kind of showing you exactly what we're going to be doing. So in this circumstance, you want to go ahead and be bagging the patient for every, every six seconds is the recommendation for ACLS, which is adult cardiopulmonary life-saving. Um, but then for like CPR out in the field, so let's just say you found somebody down, it's a completely different thing. So you want to do 30 compressions and then two breaths. 30 compressions and then two breaths. Compared to when you're already in the hospital, you're giving breaths every six seconds. And generally what we do is we go ahead and bag the patient like I said, and we will also want to bring some stuff to the uh, to the room because like I said earlier, the patient's most likely going to be intubated. So what we do then is we want to bring some cabinography. This can either be like an electric thing or like a color metric thing. We just want to make sure that the tube is in the right place when we put the tube in. We generally want to bring an ET tube holder so we can actually secure that tube. And we also want to bring our stethoscope because we want to listen to the lungs um, at any point in time, honestly. But especially once the tube is in, we want to make sure it's in the correct place. So that's generally what I bring, is I bring all my stuff to intubate the patient, or to assist anesthesia to intubate the patient. And then I also bring my stethoscope so I can kind of listen and make sure that everything is going the correct way. Maybe if I want to listen, if I want to hear, if I hear any junk or anything, if I know the patient needs suction, did they aspirate, what was going on, why is there so much crap in the lungs. Your stethoscope, it can tell entire story, so make sure you bring your stethoscope with you. So generally, once we get the patient intubated, we are still bagging the patient. We do not hook them up to a ventilator until we get the patient breathing again or uh, we get the heart rate back again. Um, because the, <laughs> the person is pounding on the chest, doing compressions, and we have flow sensors and all kind of fancy stuff hooked up to the ventilator, and the ventilator will just keep giving a breath over and over and over again, and we do not want that. So that's why we manually bag and make sure the patient is getting the correct amount of breaths. Um, that way we are in control here. So as a respiratory therapist, I have also given chest compressions before. So everyone's tired, and I'll just say to a nurse, hey, you bag, I'll go ahead and I'll do that. Um, especially if we are in a COVID patient's room who is coding, there's generally only about three of us in there compared to 50 million other people that are in a normal code. Um, so you gotta, now I've never pushed meds, obviously. However, I can do compressions, that's easy. I mean, anyone can really bag, that's pretty easy too. Um, especially a lot of these ICU nurses, they know what they're doing. Well anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever about anything, um, 
Just leave in the comments if you want to know what it's like being a code. Obviously, it's very stressful. However, I can give you a little bit more details and like the aftermath as to whether the patient makes it or not. Um, like I said earlier, once we get the patient back, we bring them to the ICU so they can get a little bit better care or more severe care. Um, like I said, any questions, leave in the comments. I'll answer it. Hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one.